My dear brothers and sisters, I bring you grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So this is Pentecost Sunday. Uh, Pentecost Sunday is the last Sunday in the season, season of Easter, and because Easter is the last season in the first half of the church year, that means Pentecost is also the last Sunday in the whole first half of the year. You may remember that the church year begins with Advent and then moves through Christmas and Epiphany and Lent, finalizing in Easter. And so the first year is all about retelling and recounting and remembering the story of Jesus. We anticipate his birth at Advent. We celebrate that birth at Christmas. We talk about Jesus being made known to the nations at Epiphany. We anticipate his great sacrifice at Lent. And we do that in a particular way during Holy Week when we remember his death. And then during Easter, which is appropriately the longest season of the church year, uh, we remember and celebrate the mystery and the joy and the power of the resurrection. So again, all of that concludes with today, with Pentecost Sunday, retelling the story of Easter. And that happens, of course, every year as part of the liturgical calendar. This year, I don't know whether it's accidental or providential, this is also the concluding Sunday in something that doesn't happen every year, but but which certainly involved all of us during 2020 and 2021, and that is that this is the last Sunday when we are being required to observe social distancing. Which means that next Sunday, Memorial Day, uh, we will no longer have to sign up for worship. You can just come as you are. And as an aside, um, maybe not in your pajamas though. Some of you have gotten used to (laughs) pajamas this past year. As an aside, um, you know, this is, allowing us to move into a new season of the pandemic. I have no doubt that we will be expanding uh, the services over the weekend at some point, but we want to kind of see how things go over the next couple of months. We will be bringing back donuts and coffee eventually, uh, but just be patient. We're sort of figuring out all of that and navigating it. Anyway, so here we are at the end of what happens every year, namely the first half of the church year. And this particular year, we're at the end of a chapter in the story of the pandemic. And I want to suggest that as we gather here today, um, the appropriate question for us to be asking is, so now what? What do we do? How should we respond? And again, that's a very appropriate question every year at Pentecost. Again, we've heard the story of Jesus. We've recounted what he's done for us. We've remembered it all. And we're invited at that point to say, okay, now as people of faith, how am I going to respond with my entire life? How am I gonna live my life in light of that story? And similarly, we've been just through this, you know, disruptive, challenging time of the pandemic. It's appropriate for us to ask as a congregation, so now what? What do we do? What's the next step? As a way to sort of frame that question and maybe not answer it fully, but to give you something to think about, I actually want to draw our attention to our stained glass windows and one of them in particular. We haven't talked about the stained glass windows in a long time. They retell the story of the entire Bible beginning with Genesis off to my left and uh, going through the Old Testament, some of the prophets, the life of Jesus is over here, and then we conclude with the um, eternity window or the new Jerusalem. Uh, There is a panel uh, focused specifically on Pentecost. It's the one on the front uh, wall there with the 12 flames. We heard that reading from Pastor Matheson, and Kathy mentioned it in the children's sermon. uh, That takes place in Acts, and that recounts graphically that story. But that's actually not the panel I want to draw our attention to. I want to draw our attention to the one that's two down from it, right behind me here, second to the last, and it's a panel that is, of course, a ship or a boat. That is the only panel out of all these 24 that is not taken from a story in the Bible or doesn't represent someone in the Bible. What does it represent? It represents all of you. The church 
is, or a ship rather, or a boat, is an ancient symbol of the church. So much so that if you go to certain churches, the main part of the church is called the nave. N-A-V-E. That comes directly from a Latin word, navis, which means, guess what? Ship. And it's where in English we get words like navigate or naval or navy. So the church is very closely tied to this symbol of a, of a, a ship or a boat. And we could talk a lot about the meaning and significance of that symbol. This morning, though, I want to do something a little simpler than that. I want to set up two very distinct ways we can think about this symbol as we reflect on the question, what do we do now? How do we live as individuals and as a community? Again, after hearing about the story of Jesus once more and after uh, coming out of most of the pandemic, what's next? So if we look at the uh, metaphor image of a ship, one answer to that question, what should we do, might be, well, the ship provides safety. The ship provides refuge. The ship keeps us safe. And if we look at the life of Jesus, we think, well, he ruffled a few feathers. He made a few people angry. It didn't end particularly well for him. Maybe what we should be doing as we look at his life is we should keep our heads down. We should be careful. We should stay out of the storm. We should avoid the difficulties of the world by hunkering down in a ship. Or again, the pandemic. It's been a tumultuous, disruptive, turbulent time. Maybe we think, well, we're gonna go into the ship, but perhaps, perhaps what God is asking of us now is to get out of these turbulent waters and move into calmer waters, or maybe even Maybe we should just take the ship off of the sea entirely and bring it into the dock. We should put it in the port. It will maybe not surprise you that that option, the option of safety and refuge and protection, is not, I think, where God calls us. It's not what God invites us to. St. Thomas Aquinas, after whom the University of St. Thomas is named, and by the way, I believe there was a, a student uh, from St. Thomas who was just killed yesterday along with one other person uh, in some difficulties downtown, so we keep all of those people in our prayers this morning. Um, but he said famously a long time ago, if the highest aim of a captain, of a ship captain, were to preserve his ship, he would keep the ship in port forever. If the highest aim of a captain were simply to pre preserve his ship, he would keep the ship in port forever. But of course we know ships were not made for their protection. They were made to accomplish some mission, to carry goods and services, to go out into the world and explore, to take people to new places, right? to bring um, health and safety supplies. And I would say more poetically, as, as we think about the ship as a metaphor for the church, part of the image of the church as a ship is to remind us that we are being called on the grand adventure of our lives by getting onto that ship and going on the high seas. Now, will that require some risk, a different kind of risk than staying in port? Absolutely. Might we face dangers? Yes. Might we be invited to sacrifice in ways that we wouldn't if we stayed on shore? Absolutely. But by doing all of that, we get to be part of something bigger than ourselves, a mission bigger than ourselves. We get to use you, each and every one of you, get to use the gifts and skills and abilities that God has given you uniquely to accomplish the mission of that ship. And in a beautiful way, we get to do it, by the way. We get to accomplish that work together as a family. And least, but by no means less, least important, we get to follow the leadership of our captain. And make no mistake who the captain is. It is Jesus, who promises, yes, to challenge us on that adventure, 
but also promises to bring us ultimately safely home. Today, that captain, Jesus, says to each and every one of you, I need you. Come and follow me. Be part of this grand adventure which will demand everything from you. All you need to do is to determine how you are going to respond to that invitation. Amen.